Good morning. It's so nice to see you all. It's nice to be back with you after a four-month absence. Both Pigeon and I are very grateful to this congregation for blessing us with a season to be able to step away and reflect on life as well as ministry. While renewal leaves are offered and even encouraged among those of us who are clergy in the United Methodist Church, seldom do we as either clergy or congregation take advantage and do that important work, and it is important work. So all of you as lay leaders and staff and congregation have given us an incredibly valuable gift, and we are most appreciative. I'm personally grateful to the entire staff, and I genuinely mean that, the entire staff, but particularly Pastor Tim for keeping things humming along nicely for these four months in my absence. I'm, yeah, I think that deserves to hear. <clears throat> And that is for both Tim and the entire staff. I'm grateful to each one of the speakers who came and shared messages with you Sunday after Sunday in my absence. Their presence has added depth and substance to our congregation and our faith journey. So thank you. Thank you all. Now I invite you to hear a word from the Lord taken from Psalm 71. Lord, I have come to you for protection. Do not let me be disgraced. Save me and rescue me, for you do what is right. Turn your ear to listen to me and set me free. Be my rock of safety where I can always hide. Give the order to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. My God, rescue me from the powers of the wicked and from the clutches of cruel oppressors. For you, O oh Lord, you are my hope. I've trusted you from childhood. Who can compare with you, O oh God? You have allowed me to suffer hardship but you have also restored me to life again and again and lift me up from the depths of the earth. You restore me to even greater honor. You comfort me. Then I will praise you with music on the harp because you are faithful to your promises. I will sing praises to you with lyre I will shout for joy and sing your praises, for you ransom me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, we pause in these moments to ask for your guidance, for your wisdom in how we think, in how we listen, and then in what we do. Be with us in our speaking and in our hearing. In the name of Christ, amen. Life is what happens to us while we are busy making other plans. That phrase is actually traced back to a section in the Reader's Digest called Quotable Quotes. Some of you remember that. The phrase appeared in the January edition of 1957 and attributed to Alan Saunders. But the phrase was actually made famous by John Lennon, who used that phrase in a touching tribute to his son in a song titled beautiful boy. 
It was one of the last songs that John Lennon recorded before his tragic death in December of 1980. Ready or not, life happens to us all. Life continues to unfold for us day after day in ways that are unpredictable and unplanned. Those of you who know me know that I am a planner. I plan my work and I work the plan. I spent months, months, meticulously planning my four-month sabbatical with calendar open, along with a planning diary, every single day was methodically planned. I had primary goals and I had secondary goals. I had objectives to be accomplished and a list of goals that I wanted to achieve. Oh, I had a plan. There were travel plans with my wife. There were plans to visit our children. There were plans to visit my parents. I had planned to do some projects around the house. I had planned to read a list of books, research to do, interviews to accomplish, music to listen to, and writing all along the way. I even planned to rest a little. I had a plan, and it was a very good plan. But within the first 10 days, my plan went right out the window. <clears throat> if you will recall, April was awful, weather-wise. We actually had to cancel church because of snow and ice on April the 15th, for heaven's sake. I had planned that that first week would be spent with my parents in Springfield, Missouri. Because of Lenten pastoral responsibilities, I had not been to my folks in quite some time to check on them. And parenthetically, they continued to decline. And over the last four months, the decline and the challenges have accelerated. And it's not fun. Back in April, I couldn't get to Springfield because of the nasty weather between here and there. I had to adjust. And while I got several things done in my office at home, I also strained my back to the point of not being able to move or rest or even walk without the assistance of a cane. For weeks, I went to doctor's appointments and physical therapy. I had diagnostic procedures done that eventually pointed to arthritis in the lower back and hip along with severely strained muscles that needed both medication and simple time to heal. And suddenly, I was faced with the inevitable fact that, my God, I'm getting older. which is hard for me to admit, let alone deal with. But I wasn't about to change the plan, even though Pigeon questioned my wisdom. And with a rather large bag of Motrin and a leave and Tylenol arthritis, we headed to St. Simon's Island, Georgia, and we drove. It was the plan was the plan for us to attend a week-long Academy of Spiritual Formation at Epworth-by-the-Sea, the oldest Methodist community in the United States. It was a beautiful place, and it was a glorious week, and we had a wonderful trip in spite of the pain that I was experiencing. Oh, we slowed down in our driving pace. We made sure that we paused along the way, and I got out and walked and stretched, and we enjoyed all the sights between here and South Georgia that we actually loved. 
Then on the morning of our second day, we received a call that my dear friend and leadership mentor, Ed McCree, had passed away. I've talked about Ed with you for several times in my sermons over the years. He served for 35 years as the CEO of Ingham Medical Center in Lansing. It was Ed who hired me to be the director of pastoral care at the hospital. He had been in failing health for some time. Pigeon and I had gone to see him twice right after Easter. So the news of his passing was not a shock, but it was a significant loss nonetheless. You see, for the last 25 years, Ed and I met for lunch on the average of twice a month for 25 years. He was my confidant, and I was his. He was a lifelong United Methodist. He was deeply, deeply committed to Christ and the church. His faith was as much a part of who he was as breathing in and breathing out. He had asked me to officiate at his funeral, and that morning his sons and I agreed that we would wait until mid-June to have the memorial service. But when the call came, we pulled into a rest area along I-75 and just sat there quietly. I had been preparing for the inevitable separation that was imminent. Yet I think it remains a truth for us all that none of us are really prepared for the loss of someone you love. As we drove that day, we listened to the German Requiem by Johannes Brown. Then the Requiem of Maurice Thurifley. Then, the Requiem of Gabriel Faure. It was like the music was a balm in Gilead to a wounded soul. As it turned out, one of the speakers at the Academy of Spiritual Formation opened his very first class with these words. Lament and doxology is the primary rhythm of life. We go back and forth between grief and thanksgiving. But today, tragically, we live in a culture of lament denial. Think of that. We tend to create for ourselves, he said, a very safe middle. We protect ourselves from lament just as we do not celebrate doxology nearly enough. And I thought to myself, my God, he's speaking to me. So I quickly wrote down what I heard Don say, and then I prayed my way into that incredibly insightful phrase for weeks. But it wasn't long, it wasn't long until I realized that I was caught, caught between lament and doxa. I was stuck in the very middle between grief and thanksgiving. I was caught between feeling sadness over the loss of a dear friend versus the celebration of knowing Ed and being blessed to call him friend. I was caught between tears of grief versus the self-centered desire to have him as a steady source of wisdom and guidance and insight versus simply, simply just being grateful for a mentor who taught me far more than I can even explain. I was grieving while simultaneously feeling 
a sense of thanksgiving. Lament and doxology were simultaneous feelings for me, and I was simply caught between the two, as though, as though they were polar opposites. But they are not opposites. Are they? Ed's death became a catalyst for me to name, name, put a name on the emotional ambiguity that I had been feeling for a very, very long time. It is not possible, friends, to avoid lament. It is not possible, and it is completely unwise, to overlook giving thanks for the blessings that we can and must count every single day. And I had gotten out of balance. I had not been free in my spirit to weave creatively and transparently between lament and doxology. When we think about it, the psalmist had mastered that rhythmic precision in the ebb and flow of life between lament and doxology. Oh, we know the phrases well. We can recite them. And if we don't know them, we can certainly identify them when we hear them. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Hear my voice. My God, I cry out to you day by day, and you answer not. I cry by night, and there is no relief. How long, O oh Lord? How long will you forget? Why, O oh Lord, do you stand aloof and hide from me in times of distress? Oh, we know the feelings. We can identify with lament. If you're a student of the scriptures, we can agree quickly that lament and gratitude are dominant themes from Genesis to Revelation. But here is a truth. Don't miss this. Please don't miss this. Lament is not a failure of our faith. It is an act. Let me run that again. Lament is not a failure of our faith. It is instead an act of faith. We cry out to God because we know of God's immense love for us. And in that relationship between our love for God and God's love for us, there must be honesty when we face pressures and disappointments and struggles. In prayer, it's all right. It's all right to express our uncensored feelings to the one who created us and loves us through our discouragements, disappointments, and pain. But you see, in order to balance our life with our faith, we must be careful that lament is not all we do. We must count our blessings. We need to be faithful to praise God for being with us always. We find spiritual sp strength when we praise God, even when we don't understand what's going on. And again, going back to the psalms, God is our rock, our fortress, our present help in the time of need. God is trustworthy, a refuge in times of trouble. God is faithful from everlasting to everlasting. Can you hear it? Can you hear the psalmist? 
calling across all these centuries, teaching us to weave healthily, healthily between lament and doxology. But I wouldn't be fair if I didn't caution you. Doxology can often overwhelm. Lament can often overwhelm doxology. We sense it almost daily, don't we? When we read or hear the news reports that we listen to constantly, we lament. My God, do we lament. And we say again and again, oh, how long, oh Lord? Where are you? But most of us become so focused on lament that we forget to count our blessings. We forget to give thanks. If we're honest with ourselves, we could agree that every single person sitting within the sound of my voice this morning is probably caught somewhere something between lament and doxology. We grieve and we give thanks. But in order to be balanced in this journey of faith, we must embrace both lament and doxology as extraordinary gifts. We need to be prayerfully, prayerfully free to move between the two, knowing that both are acts of worship. That's what I've been working on. Oh, I'm not there yet. I gotta tell you, I'm not there yet. I have not mastered that rhythm But I'm practicing. I'm practicing. Maybe it's something you need to practice too. May God bless this simple word of witness to us all. Amen. You do realize you do realize you just sang a doxology. If you need an example, there it is. Photocopy it, stick it on the refrigerator, do whatever you need to do, but be reminded that that movement, that movement weaves again and again and again between lament and doxology between grief and thanksgiving. Again, it's great to be back with you. The spirit is good in this sanctuary. Feel it. God is at work. So go forth from this place renewed in your own spirit, eager and ready to serve God, who loves us all more than we could ever think or imagine. Amen.